Hello guys, Stefan here, Stefan 3D. So, in today's video, we will talk about the new firmware for the KLT K1 Max, and the features and uh, how it's uh, performing on the printer. Subscribe and stay tuned for more videos about like this one. So, let's start a bit with the with the printer, with the interface, what's changed on the firmware. We have the home screen is the same. Here on the settings page, let's say, uh, we have uh, a new option to change the speed during printing. We have silent, stable, standard and ultra fast. Okay. I prepared also a file, um, a box for uh, the Bamboo A1 or N1 Mini to print. And here in the settings, you can see we have the latest version 1.3.3.3. And also we have a new menu called Expert Mode. When we click on this, we have uh, we can adjust the Z, Z offset, but this is only during uh, printing. The flow the same, and also we can uh, do a nozzle PID uh, calibration, PID tune. Actually, we're, we're gonna make it right now. We have PLA inside the hot end so we will make it at 240 degrees as you can see here it's something in chinese because this the former is uh, was taken from the discord server it's not a f official firmware from clarity so i don't think this is the latest version of this maybe the the next uh, week the official version will be out and we will have some uh, adjustments we will let the PID tune oh, also we can uh, work through here what I want to show on the about page I used this printer for uh, around uh, 11 days and a half or something like this was performing good, but I done some uh, adjustment to the printer. I will talk about later. Okay, oh, as you can see, the PID. Will take around five minutes. Let's talk about the changes made. To the first changes was to grease all the axes the Z screw with a good uh, grease from a super loop and with the second one was to put big heat sinks every motor because they are quite hot let's say and the bit heat sink uh, helps heat uh, PTA fit tube I take it out from the chain and put it through this one so we can put it so here with a zip tie and uh, we stay much better the next one I take it out the filament runner sensor because uh, from my point of view it's useless it's working but uh, it's uh, getting hard sometimes to put the filament inside Another change was made inside the printer here in the base. Uh, the stock mainboard fan, fan for uh, from Creality was not good enough to to maintain the mainboard uh, really uh, at a let's say a good working temperature. So I replaced that fan with a Sudon fan. The same with four wires, and it's working as expected. I think we'll have around two minutes and uh, we'll be finished the PID tone. And after this we will... Uh, oh, okay, so it's done. Now here is writing back. Okay, let's start a print. I will, I will print this box. And uh, we'll let the calibration be done. Okay. 
I will still hold my the phone in the hand, but up here on the stand. This is also a printer stand. That is very good at uh, taking pictures or, or filming some. I hope that you can hear me well because I have an external microphone and I think this will be good. The next changes to the printer I think uh, will be a better hot end and uh, also in the future i think i will change the belts and the idlers because i don't like it so much and another question from uh, someone on uh, on facebook was uh, why i didn't root the firmware and go with the mensal interface and so on because when uh, you root the printer and uh, add more stuff like uh, Clipper interface, the main cell and Moonraker and the camp and so on. The board in this thing it's uh, not enough, enough memory and uh, will cause sometimes to, to freeze and so on. So it's better to leave like stock and uh, wait for Creality to, to give some uh, firmware updates like this one. Anyway, this is a, a very important upgrade. As we can see now, finally the, the LiDAR will work and will do its job ah so sorry for the noise but it's a low printer So for anyone who have a K1 Max, I recommend to do this upgrade. Even it's not the last one, the official one, but you will need to try it out because it's better. Now it's homing. Also, what uh, I can show, uh, I also made another test before this video. The bed level was really improved, and now the let's say the the force sensor from the bed it's really working as expected because now it's compensating very well, and we have uh, we can have a, a good first layer even th the bed is not uh, straight or it's warped or something like this. I will let the whole process of uh, leveling and starting and so on. This print it's 
I think about a one hour or something like this. But uh, I will let it uh, till it starts and take some speeds to see the quality and how it's performing. It takes some time, but uh, I want just wanted to show you how the lidar works now and uh, what is the the logic behind the lidar and how it's scanning the the surface. Because in the older formals, that laser from the lidar was also uh, enabled here to scan this layer, but uh, that's not uh, how this was supposed to work. So for these layers, the camera must work here to adjust the the flow rate. Sorry. The laser should be only for the bell plate to see if uh, any object or something like this are on the bell, bell plate. Try to put the camera lower. Something like this. Now it will make a le lesser calibration. We're scanning that side. With the camera, now it's heating up for the flow calibration. Sorry if this video will be long, but uh, I want to show the entire process. Now it's uh, scanning the flow calibration pattern. Now it's calculating and uh, in a few seconds we will go to scan the 
the bulb plate where the part will be and after this we'll purge again and we'll start printing I know it's a long process but I wanted to show you the entire process Now it will purge again and we will start printing. The first layer, after the, the first layer is down, we will scan it again to see if it's uh, any, let's say, deviations. And uh, after that, we will start printing at the speeds that are in the file. And now also we have the the option to skip object right from the screen as you can see here this is the option to skip object but we have only one part and uh, we cannot uh, skip this one if we had the multiple parts on the blueprint we can uh, skip uh, exclude object now we also have uh, control here we can adjust the offset the offset we can adjust the flow and and that's it <laughs> we already done that one as you can see a perfect first layer here on the mount
so we will continue this when uh, after the first layer is down and uh, the printer starts moving uh, very fast guys we are back so the first layer is down the printer scanned the first layer and now we'll start printing and let's see how it performs This is the outer walls because I I go with the fur, uh, with a few walls and uh, that's why it's printing slower because it's a little with overhang. The printer is pushing plastic very well. I will take the phone and uh, I will uh, show you the, the top down view after this layer. Let me see if I can give you a better look. something like this as you can see perfect layers thanks to reality <laughs> I didn't think uh, I would say that but uh, it's a good firmware and then now the fun kicks in <laughs> I'll take the phone out to show you.
Actually, the the touch interface is very nice now with some features, with these additional features, and it's working very well. But uh, for me, it's uh, hard to watch out to the screen of the phone and uh, to see where to press on the on the touch screen. But it's working very well, as you can see. Later I will uh, I will stop the video now because uh, it will be too much one hour of just moving uh, filming sorry sorry for my bad English also and uh, I will come later with an uh, YouTube shorts to show the printing process and the quality thanks guys and uh, I will definitely recommend to check the latest version of uh, Creality Formal. It's far, far better than the first ones. So I'm Stefan and uh, we see us in the next videos. Bye.